So in this section, we're going to be talking a little bit about the digestive system but in or, and the excretory system. But to first talk about the digestive system, we need to talk about what we need to digest. And uh, there's six important types of nutrients that we need to take into our body through the digestive system. The, the most important is number one is water. Since 55 to 60 percent of most of our body is water, it's important that we have enough of it. Every chemical reaction in our body occurs in water. So we need water for um, chemical reactions to happen. Uh, hydrolysis is when we take water to split things. So we need water molecules uh, to break things down. We need water molecules uh, for many chemical reactions. Uh, it's, on, it's important to have water to not only just have chemical reactions, but to also eliminate wastes uh, through urine, maintain blood pressure, most of our blood is water. Typically when you have low blood pressure, you're dehydrated. Uh, sweat regulates our body temperatures and keeps our skin moist. Water is extremely important. Carbohydrates is where we get our energy. So we're going to put that as number two. Uh, a simple carbohydrate, I'm sure you've heard people talk about simple carbs versus complex carbohydrates. Uh, a monosaccharide, let's, let's say, I'll put a little G here, like glucose, which is a single sugar, one single molecule. Uh, you can also link them together, right? Let's say I'll link it with uh, fructose. Uh, now we have a disaccharide, and that's a sugar cane. That's sucrose, right? Uh, that's sucrose. Uh, so these are simple sugars between one and two molecules big. Uh, once you start to link many sugars together, right, and have these polysaccharides like starch and cellulose, now you have complex carbohydrates. These are quick and easy to digest and give us immediate energy, and complex carbohydrates are really good for long-term storage of that energy. Proteins are needed to build uh, structures. Uh, proteins have many, many functions, one of the most important which is our enzymes. Our enzymes uh, are shaped uh, because of the unique ability for proteins to um, make thousands and thousands of individually specialized shapes. Uh, and all that a protein is, is a polymer of amino acids. So each one of these guys, we'll just put a little A here for amino acids, is an amino acid, any one of the 20 amino acids. And then if you continue with this long polymer chain, right, it folds up to form a protein. And each protein has a unique shape based on the sequence of its amino acids. Uh, a lot of our hormones, like insulin, are also made of proteins. Fats, most people like think of fats as something bad, but we need fats and other lipids in order to be healthy and maintain homeostasis. Uh, a lot of the fatty acids uh, that we take in, uh, we can build inside of our body, but the ones that we can't are called essential fatty acids. These are our, you know, our omega-3s and omega-6 fatty acids. Why would we need fat? Well, if you think about it, what's our cell membranes made up of other than phospho? lipids. And these are the fatty acid tails right there. So if you want to build membranes and build new uh, cells, you need fats. You need uh, a lot of uh, chemical signals like cholesterol uh, and other hormones are, are fat-based as well. Minerals are inorganic materials uh, like sodium, potassium, think of ions ultimately, right? Atoms that are charged. Uh, these things need to get taken in from our diet as well. Uh, and they are also removed from our body through the urine and sweat, so we're constantly having to replace them. Uh, it's very important for uh, us to maintain these ions because this is a neuron right here, this is a neuron's axon. And in order for a neuron to fire, what we do is we have these ions, sodium and potassium going in and out of our cell membranes in order to cause this uh, firing of an action potential. Uh, this is a, like a, if a neuron were to fire, it gets to become very positive on, uh, it starts to become positive on the inside and then negative, and that's the flowing of these ions. So our nervous system wouldn't be able to function correctly uh, without these minerals, sodium and potassium and chloride and other things. Uh, so if we do have um, the, a deficiency in minerals, let's say we don't have enough iodine, right? Uh, we have something called a goiter, right? We need iodine uh, in order to make what's called thyroxine, okay? Thyroxine is made by the thyroid, okay? And then in order to make thyroxine, we need iodine. 
And what happens is without iodine, if you don't have iodine, the thyroid continually pumps out this intermediate compound, right? This intermediate compound that when combined with iodine turns into thyroxine. But without iodine, it just keeps on making this stuff and making this stuff until iodine is present. And so it can get converted into thyroxine. And the overproduction of that causes the thyroid, which is a gland located, uh, it's kind of shaped like a butterfly, on your neck to just swell up. And so we see this huge goiter. We also need vitamins. Vitamins are organic molecules, so they have carbon in them, that are needed to typically work with um, enzymes to have our metabolism function correctly. Vitamin D is an, in, uh, is an important vitamin uh, for our bones and teeth. Vitamin A uh, helps us uh, uh, see better in the dark, so it's, uh, it's associated with vision. Iron is a central component of hemoglobin, which is needed for uh, our red blood cells to transport gases like oxygen. Uh, a couple of different types of vitamins. We have fat soluble, ones that we can store in our fat, A, D, E, and K. And then we have water soluble. Uh, water solubles are very unique in the sense that they can't be stored, so uh, they're excreted in our urine, so it's very important to make sure that we stock up on vitamin C and B. Without vitamin C, it's vitamin C deficiency, uh, you could develop something called scurvy, and uh, pirates, right? Arr, right? Pirates used to have it because they used to go on these long voyages with, and they couldn't keep some, uh, things like fruit and citrus that contains lots of vitamin D because uh, they would typically eat these cured meats and they would develop it. And some of the signs of it are these redness uh, in between your gums. Without vitamin D, which is an essential for taking calcium and storing it into the bone and making it hard, babies' uh, bones are mainly cartilage. And without vitamin D, we can't turn that cartilage into bone because we need calcium in order to convert into bone. And so if they don't have enough vitamin D in their diet, when they start to walk, this cartilage is very flexible and it starts to bow. And then you get something called rickets. So it's important for us to not only just get those uh, essential minerals and vitamins, but it's also important to get our food energy. And the way that we measure that is in calories. Uh, one food calorie is actually a thousand, chem, you know, normal calories. And we define a calorie as a unit of energy. Uh, and one calorie is the amount of energy needed to take one gram of, of water um, up one degree Celsius. Uh, so it's important to look at our nutrition labels to see, uh, you know, how much energy is in our food. Uh, one gram of uh, fat will actually give us nine calories. Uh, and then one gram of protein gives us four calories and then one gram of carbs also gives us four calories. So next time you look at your food labels, add up all the grams of proteins and then total carbs, multiply the um, carbs by four, multiply the uh, proteins by four, and then the fat by nine, uh, and then it should be approximately the total calories that you have.